gene is the basic unit of inheritance. And I like to think of it somewhat in analogy to a computer as the digital 0-1 code that underlies the, the, the fundamental function of the computer. And in that sort of analogy, the basic subunits of DNA, of which there are four, A, G, C, and T, are analogous to the zeros and ones. And they're strung together in a string as are zeros and ones in a computer to represent something. And that uh, sort of minimal unit of representation is a gene. And genes are strung together on chromosomes that each consist of one to 5,000 genes. So the question then is now that we have the sequence of all of the genes and their order on all of the chromosomes, is what is it that these genes do? What is one of these unitary um, functions? And what happens when its function goes awry, as in the case of disease? So for that, we have to kind of think of what comes out of a gene. So again, if we think of the DNA, which is the, the sort of zeros and ones, if you will, in the computer, it's the memory as a series of a, in, a, in a very simple form, a string of A's, G's, C's, and T's along the linear length of DNA. And what happens to use that information, as in the zeros and ones of a computer, to say, realize that into an image of your mother or of a sailboat or of a setting, a setting sun, the way you, you get that information out of the DNA is first you copy it uh, into a, a short-term intermediate that's very chemically similar to DNA called RNA. And then that RNA gets translated into a sequence of other uh, entities called amino acids that, like the A's, G's, C's, and T's, are strung together in a linear string in DNA, but now as strung together in protein. And then the protein is what has the gene function. And again, in this sort of computer analogy, the protein would be the actual image that you'd see on your computer screen of a sailboat, your mother, or the setting sun. So to sort of illustrate this idea again, the gene that is at the level of DNA is a rather monotonous repetition of these different subunits. So these are like the zeros and ones stored in the DNA. And then through the process I just indicated of uh, copying it into an RNA and then uh, into protein, you end up with a complex three-dimensional shape, which is the protein. So again, this is just like the zeros and ones in your computer. This is like the sailboat. And each protein that's made from what looks like a similar uh, appearing strings of zeros and ones is very different because, of course, the orders of the zeros and ones, the A's, G's, C's, and T's, are different for each protein. And so you get some that are globular like this, others that are long and thin to make hair, others that are involved with little motors on the end to pull on each other as you have as pr for proteins that work in the muscle. In the case of a heritable genetic disease, what's wrong is that there's something wrong at the level of the DNA. So if you remember the sort of general uh, paradigm here is you have DNA goes to RNA goes to protein. And the, the initiating problem in a genetic disease is you have a problem at the level of DNA that then propagates to the level of RNA. And what this could be is that where an A should be, there's a G instead. And now, instead of making the normal protein, there's a defective protein of, of some kind. And one example of that is that the protein just gets uh, chopped off. There are less severe changes where there's just a change in the amino acid that maybe makes the protein made, but not quite doing the right thing. But in any case, the, the general idea is that genetic diseases arise as a consequence of mutations at the level of DNA that get propagated to the level of protein that alter the gene function so that it's not acting the way it's supposed to.